Meanwhile, the Faith and Freedom Coalition Conference is currently underway in the nation's capital. That annual event includes many prominent conservatives who are addressing key priorities of the faith-based community. We now want to take you live to D.C. where One America's Chanel Rion is live at that event. Chanel, President Trump kicked off the Faith and Freedom Conference earlier in the week, I guess highlighting the magnitude of this event. So what's the focus of this gathering and really the message that it's trying to convey? Good evening, Alex. Well, the overall theme of this entire four-day policy extravaganza, it, there, it could be summed up in one theme, and that is the re-election of Donald J. Trump for another four years. Now, there are sub-themes underneath all of that. We had over 60 conservative all-stars who had come back and forth on the stage and in breakout panels throughout the hotel, mostly discussing ways that, that the conservative Christian uh, voting bloc could defeat socialist conser uh, socialist Democrats this uh, election cycle. And we ranged in discussions from the philosophical, where we heard Dennis Prager discussing how freedom is fragile, it is dependent on the passions of each generation, and we had Dennis Prager go on to say that, uh, that each generation is in charge of ensuring that the fragile freedoms that we enjoy today will be carried on tomorrow and that we instinctually as humans do not want freedom we want to be taken care of, which was a striking message in this conference. And then we had practical discussions from the Trump tax cuts to record unemployment under the Trump administration. So the main theme of this conference has been promises made, promises kept by the Trump administration and why it is so imperative that Christian conservatives turn out to vote in 2020. And going off of what you said, you mentioned that all the big names that are attending that event, of course, President Trump kicking it off about four days ago now. But tonight, Vice President Mike Pence is the headline speaker. So how is this crowd really reacting to his upcoming performance? Of course, he's no stranger to the, Christian, or the uh, really religious community. He's very much so a big figure. So what do you expect coming from his appearance? What is the crowd saying about that? And what issues do you expect the vice president to touch on? The, the vice president is going to be bookending this four-day conference. So again, we were kicked off by uh, President Trump, who started the tone, who set the tone for the entire event, which was adrenaline-packed, action-packed, just people running from one, one room to another, excited for book signings. And then now everyone's all changed into their their tuxedos and their evening gowns, and there's a little more of a calmer kind of excitement, but it's still an excitement knowing that tonight is really the, the uh, not the ending of a conference, but the beginning tomorrow of a re-election campaign that will start in 2020. But uh, what we will hear from, Pre from Vice President Pence tonight is mostly going to be a celebration of what this administration has accomplished in two and a half years. And some of the highlights will be probably discussing the Supreme Court nominations, the two justices, Justices Kavanaugh and Justices Gorsuch, which are huge victories in the Christian conservative community. We will be talking about pro-life legislation that has been pushed through in uh, the Congress is under President Trump. We will be probably talking about the unemployment in the United States in the last two and a half years and, of course, the strong economy. So what Vice President Pence will probably be recapping is just the successes of this administration. It will be largely positive and it will be celebratory. And Chanel, you mentioned the excitement in that crowd. We can hear it actually right now through your microphone. And as you said, it's a calmer tone than what we saw, in fact, earlier in the day. And there's no one even speaking right now. And that kind of goes along with the head of the coalition, what he said, Ralph Reed. He said the president's approval rating is the highest ever recorded among evangelical and Christian voters at 83 percent. So how important will this demographic be going into 2020? Well, let's put this into monetary context. Faith and Freedom Coalition is going to spend $50 million between now and 2020. $50 million. And this is a nonprofit organization. And they will be spending that money on a get-out-to-vote effort for 2020. And uh, Ralph Reed told One American News that this is going to, al going to also be a historical effort reaching out to the Latin 
community, the Latin voting bloc, and that it, the monet that's just the monetary part. Now let's talk about in 2018, Pew Research said that 47 percent of the entire voting bloc identified as Protestants, which is largely this crowd. So. Uh, so that's the, those are all positive indications that this is actually a really important voting block. And as you can hear, as you can see, they are energized, they're motivated, they are laser focused. And again, tonight is just the kickoff to the next two, two years as they rally each other, as they push for a Christian conservative value system and support President Trump into the elections. That's right. And the head of that organization was just speaking the other day, and he said this is one issue that really kind of transcends demographics. This is an event that speaks to not only Christian and evangelical voters, but as you were saying, Latin voters, women voters, whoever it may be, those big demographics that will play a really influential role in 2020. So that's going to be something that we're going to keep an eye on tonight. Once again, Vice President Pence should be speaking in about 10 minutes. And, of course, we're going to be airing that live right here on One America News, so all our viewers don't go anywhere. Chanel, phenomenal job as always. We'll be sure to keep tabs on you throughout this event. Thank you very much. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube. And call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.